Hey Internet. The term dwarf planet was adopted in 2006 because there was an increase in the discovery of objects further away from the Sun than Neptune that rivaled the size of Pluto. So, did we start discovering new planets? Nah, it was just that we had to revise our definition of planet. To be a planet, the celestial body has to orbit the Sun. It should have sufficient mass so that it can overcome its rigid body forces. It can assume a hydrostatic equilibrium, that is, a round or spherical shape. And the last thing is that it should also clear its neighborhood in which it orbits. For example, Pluto is now a dwarf planet. Why? Because it goes around the sun, so it obeys the first law. It has sufficient mass to become a round spherical object. Even clears the second rule, but it lies in the Kuiper belt, where there are many asteroids having the same mass and the size like Pluto. So it does not pass as a planet, and hence it's called a dwarf planet. This was all about dwarf planets. But did you know, every day 100 tons of material from asteroids, comet, fall on the earth. Most of it is destroyed by friction in the atmosphere. What is the real difference between an asteroid and a comet? Let's find out. The major difference between a comet and an asteroid is their composition. Asteroids consist of metals and rocky material, whereas comets are made up of ice, dust, rocky material and organic compounds. There's another difference. Majority of asteroids reside in the asteroid belt, that is the region between orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Whereas comets reside in the Kuiper belt, that is the region where Pluto orbits with many millions of icy comets. The second place where we can find these comets are the Oort cloud, a region where trillions of comets may circle the sun at a huge distance of 20 trillion kilometers. There's another notable difference between an asteroid and a comet. Comets have a tail. As a comet approaches the sun, the ice in the comet begins to melt and other materials also vaporize due to the heat from the sun. This causes a halo that extends outside the comet as it sails through space. The ice and compounds like methane and ammonia develop a fuzzy cloud-like shell called coma. Forces exerted on the coma by the sun's radiation pressure and solar wind cause an enormous elongated tail to form. This tail always points away from the sun. There isn't any significant difference between a meteoroid, meteor and meteorite. It's just that it is the name of the phases through which a rock passes as it enters the atmosphere. So first, a meteoroid is a rocky metallic object traveling through space. As the meteorite enters the atmosphere and becomes visible due to the friction caused in the atmosphere, that phase is called a meteor. And if that meteor survives the fall through our atmosphere and lands on Earth, then it's called a meteorite. Most of the meteorites are fragments from comets and asteroids. We humans have sampled from Mars. There have been impacts caused due to asteroids or comets on Mars, due to which material from Mars were ejected due to the impact and then traveled through space, ending their journey on Earth. Just a fun fact, a meteorite, which is a size of a car, on average enters the Earth's atmosphere every year. Most of this meteorite do not reach the ground but burn up in our atmosphere. So this was it for today guys. Hit the thumbs up, share this video with your friends and comment down below with your suggestions. Click here to subscribe to my channel and as always stay curious, stay awesome.